Good evening. A special welcome to our guests and visitors today. We continue our theme of From the River to the Mountains, and we'll be celebrating the transfiguration of our Lord. And so we get a glimpse of his glory as he shines with wonder on that mount. And we see him go down from that mountain to the, the cross where he will die for our sins, a, a place of glory that we know that we are forgiven through his blood. So we ask the Lord to bless our worship today, and we begin with our opening hymn. Please stand. We begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, for it is evening, and the day is almost done. Let your light scatter the darkness. Let it shine in our hearts and lives. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we have been bought back from sin, death, and hell by the perfect life and innocent death of Jesus Christ. In him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace until the rising of the sun when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. And the voice that came from the, the bright cloud, you foreshadowed our adoption as your sons. In your mercy, make us co-heirs of glory with Jesus our King, and bring us at last to heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We join singing the psalm. Kings of the earth rise up and the ruler 
The first reading for today is 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The prophet Elijah never tasted death, but instead was taken directly to heaven. On the Mount of Transfiguration, Elijah appeared with the glorious Son of God who would taste death. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stood, at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided it, divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a, a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise... It will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading for today is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. We cannot yet physically see what those disciples saw on the Mount of Transfiguration, but St. Paul teaches we can still see the glory of Christ's light in the gospel. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that display, displays the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as the Lord, and ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. We join saying the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. A cloud covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Alleluia. The gospel reading for today is Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. Jesus gives Peter, James, and John a glimpse of his true glory. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. 
Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone that they had, what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who came humbly into this world, but today on this transfiguration we see his glory. We get to see who he is, that he is our God, the one who loves us deeply. Amen. Have you ever heard someone say this, a piece of heaven on earth? You know, you, you might hear someone say this and you might kind of wonder, well, like, what does that mean or what are they trying to say? You know, they're not really saying that it is a literal piece of heaven on earth, right? We know that heaven is perfect. <laughs> and even the best stuff on this earth is tarnished in sin. And it isn't as perfect as heaven. But so what does someone mean when they say a piece of heaven on earth? Well, they're saying whatever they're experiencing, maybe it's a, a, a new baby that they hold in their arms. You know, this is a piece of, of heaven on earth. Or, or maybe they, they go to this exotic place in the world where it's just beautiful and they say, this is a, a piece of heaven on earth. You know, they're saying, you know, if we could even understand what heaven is going to be like, this is just a, a, a taste of that. But imagine if you could actually say, this is a piece of heaven on earth. You know, how, how, how would we think about that? You know, I, I'm not saying, you know, as you read Revelation, you're, you're getting a, a piece of heaven on earth. But what if you could actually say, here on earth, there is a piece of heaven. What would that be like? Today we get to experience this with a, a few of Jesus' disciples who could actually literally say, this is a piece of heaven on earth. So let's see what they experience as they experience that glimpse of, of God's glory. So what would you think if Jesus told you, you would get a, a, a piece of, of heaven on earth? You might be wondering, you know, what would that be like? You know, uh, what would that ex look like? What, what kind of experience would that feel, feel like for oneself? The, the verse before our reading, verse 1 in chapter 9, we hear this. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God has come with power. You know, Jesus was essentially talking to his disciples and saying, some of you will experience the kingdom of God before you die. You will experience heaven here on this earth. And you might be wondering, okay, you know, what is that going to look like? Which ones of us will get to experience this? I think you're left with a lot more questions than answers after the, this first verse in chapter 9. But then we hear, six days pass by, and we witness a small group of individuals, three disciples, and Jesus. And, and we are told this as they go up the mountain. After six days, Jesus took Peter and James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. Did these men know what was going to happen? Did they know what they were going to experience on top of this mountain? Probably not. And the only one who knew what was going to happen on top of that mountain as they climbed up it was Jesus. He, he knew what was going to occur. He knew what was going to happen. And what happened? There he was, transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them, 
And they, there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. There is the, the, the peace of heaven on earth. There is Jesus, the one who looks so average, an average-looking Jew, now was shining with glory. There Jesus was, showing his divinity uh, to those around him, that he was God. There he was, a, a piece of heaven on earth. And there were two other individuals, right, that were there. We, we see that these old saints of old who had died and gone up into heaven, they were there too. We know them as uh, Elijah and Moses. But as you look at Jesus, as he's talking with them, you know, you see him bright. We are told that his clothes were whiter than anything could possibly ever bleach it. You know, you think of this light, right? We hear in chapter 1 of John, uh, In him was life. In that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You know, here was the, the, the light of the universe. Here was the light of God shining brightly. You know, how much to take in, how much to kind of process as you see all this unfold on top of this mountain. A, a piece of heaven on earth. And what's even more amazing, before you get to the response of the disciples, you, you see something else, or you also hear something else. There's a cloud, a, a voice that, that speaks. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my Son, whom I love. Listen to Him. Again, uh, imagine this glory that is there. Uh, imagine the, the, the wonderful peace of heaven on earth. You know, the, the voice of God himself speaking and saying, This is my Son whom I love. Listen to him. He is the Son of God. Listen to what he has to do. Listen to what he has to tell you. Because it's my word. Oh, you, you, you see all this and how amazing it was. You know, could you kind of imagine, you know, the, essentially the scene that's there with Jesus and, and Moses and Elijah? Could you imagine them talking in heaven before Jesus came to this earth? Now that was happening here? Wow. But now let's kind of get to the disciples. How did they react to all of this? You know, how did they process this? We are told from Peter. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Again, it's a lot to process. Could you imagine seeing heaven with your own eyes? And here it is on earth. You have never seen Jesus like this before. You certainly have never seen Moses and Elijah. You know, you've never heard the, the voice of God. You know, they're just kind of grasping at straws. You know, the, what, we should do something. You know, if we're on this mountain and they're here, we should provide something for them. How about a place to stay? How about some tents, uh, shelters? You know, why did they react this way? He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. You know, they were terrified. You know, they, they, they didn't understand, again, what was going on, or just to be in God's glory in this way. It would certainly be terrifying. How would you react? How would you be on top of that mountain? As all of a sudden you see Jesus in glory. You hear the, the voice of the Father echoing. You, you see Moses and Elijah there. 
Again, there's probably a lot of emotions that one could have. But what about fear? Would fear be one? Most likely it would. I kind of was, as I thought about this text, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, how would I react? You know, there would be a piece of me that would be like, yes, right? But as I thought about it longer, I think I would react no differently than the disciples. I think I would be terrified. I couldn't imagine standing before the all-holy God, the God of all, all, all things, the universe, and there I stand as a sinner. There I, I stand with my sins before me, in my heart and in my mind. There I, I stand, thinking through all the things that, that I, I had not done or should have done. I don't deserve to be standing before my Lord. I don't deserve to be standing before His glory. I'd be shaking in fear knowing that His judgment should come. Can you relate? Can you understand that for yourself too? You know, you, you think about all the times where people have interacted in the Bible with God and, and how often you have to bow down in fear or trembling or re respect to the all-holy God. You, you think of Abram. Abram fell face down and God said to him, oh, what did Abram do? He fell face first before God. God deserves all the respect. He deserves all the honor. Or maybe you think of Joshua, kind of a longer section, but neither he replied, but as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then what does Joshua do? Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does the Lord, my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Or, or maybe you think about Psalm 114. Maybe we would act no differently. Tremble, earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God uh, of Jacob. Sinners who are confronted with the, the, the all-holy God, the all-perfect God, cannot help but fall on their knees and plead for mercy to say, Lord, you are the God of the universe. I do not deserve to be before you. I deserve to be wiped out before your presence, O Lord. But there's also another side to this that you could kind of look at it. You know, you could think of, of God's glory, a, a piece of heaven on earth. Would you want to leave it? If you could experience God's peace on earth? If you could actually experience heaven on earth for what it is? You know, I, I don't want to go back down the mountain because I, I, I'm dealing with different problems in my life. I got this health issue. Uh, I got relationship struggles. I, I, I have mental struggles. I, I, I have, you know, all these different problems that are worldly. I don't want to go back down the mountain. I'd rather stay up here in this place of glory. I don't want to leave it. But imagine if Jesus did stay up there. Imagine if he didn't go down. We wouldn't be going to the, into the Lenten season. You know, his mission wouldn't have been complete. He, he couldn't stay there. They had to go back down. And again, that's exactly what we hear. Suddenly, when they looked around... They no longer saw anyone 
with them except Jesus. Again, this moment of glory, this special circumstance that was there was no more. Jesus looked like how he always did. You know, uh, Elijah and, uh, and Moses were no longer there. They were back in heaven. The, the echoes of the Father's voice had become silent. It just seemed like earth again. Not necessarily a, a piece of, of heaven on earth. And so, we hear, As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They went down from the mountain because Jesus still had a mission. He still had a lot to do. He, 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 it wasn't his time to go to heaven. No, he was still on this earth. He was still here to save God's people. And, and as we go into that Lenten season, we go from that mount of glory to the, the, the cross of glory. We go to the day where, where they, on that Good Friday, where, where it will be pitch dark as if night. There we will hear the, the cries of pain from Jesus' voice. There we will hear crying from those around him as they see their loved one dying. There we will see Jesus suffering for your sin and mine on the cross, enduring hell itself. So that we may not just get a, a piece of heaven, but all of heaven. So that we could enjoy heaven for all eternity in, in the, the fullness of what God ha has made it to be. All because of what Jesus has done. All because the one who comes down that mountain, the one who dies, And we are told, the one who will rise from the dead. We long for that Easter morn when we will see our Savior no longer in the tomb, but living and in His glory. What a wonderful scene we get as we go into that Lenten season again. So we long not just for a piece of heaven. We long to be in the glory of God. We long to experience heaven as it is in its perfectness, in, his, in its glory, and in its peace. We long for the place where Jesus lives. We, we long for the place that the home has been made for us. We, we long to hear the, the Father's voice echoing throughout the cosmos of heaven. We, we long for the, the Holy Spirit to be flowing and dwelling in us as we rejoice in praising our God with all the angels and all the saints like Moses and Elijah and those who died in the faith. We, we long to see the Savior with His marks in His hands and feet and embrace us with a welcoming hug as we enter heaven itself. We long to be in heaven where we can stand in front of our God without any fear of the sins that plague us or haunt us. But instead, we can have that reassurance and comfort. It's all gone. It's been wiped away. You do not have to fear your sin, even now, as a Christian. But imagine, no more minds going back to the past. No, no more things that just kind of ruminate in our minds over and over again. But true peace. You know, we will get to see heaven not as some kind of shop that, that you're walking past. And you're just like, Wow, that looks nice. I wish I could have that. But instead, God says here, Oh, I open the doors of heaven to you. 
Here is my home. He see it for all, all of its glory. Live with me in this glory now and forever as a child of mine. Amen. Please stand. Confessing our faith using the, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right that we should at all times and all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you have done for us. Thank you for sending your one and only Son into this world to die for us. We long to see your glory in heaven one day. Please be with us till, that, till you take us from this heavenly home, from this earthly home, to bring us to your heavenly home. Dear Lord, we trust in you. Amen. And we join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and keep us. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when we next gather for worship, it will be Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent. On, the day, on that day, we will begin our solemn journey to the Savior's cross, while the joy of faith remains undiminished throughout the year. Our rejoicing during Lent is muted and quiet. For centuries, therefore, Christian churches have omitted their most jubilant song, songs during this season, including the word, Alleluia which means praise the Lord. Now for a time we say farewell to Alleluia. We do this to prepare ourselves for the quieter days of Lent. The Alleluia will return on Easter dawn as we gather to shout our praises to the risen Lord. You may be seated. We join in singing that Alleluia song of triumph.
Good evening. Um, just a couple of announcements here. Again, we have uh, our Ash Thursday, Ash Wednesday service on Thursday, February 15th at 6.30 p.m. All are invited to join. Uh, we have a baptism on Sunday uh, for Grady Daniel Winter. And then uh, you see the, the basement project that we kind of mentioned a while ago. All that information is kind of there. Um, please know that all gifts kind of given toward this, if it goes beyond uh, the, do, what was needed, the rest of it will just go into the general fund then. But you kind of see all that information, how much all that will cost. Uh, if you are interested in doing the ice fishing thing or you're with the, the kids, uh, there's a sign-up sheet and there's uh, days where you can indicate which days work best for you and we'll kind of figure out what day works for everyone. So God's blessings and hope to see you next time.